In three, two, one. What up, Gripsters and random YouTubers? Evan here for Grips.com. Let's play poker. Today, we are going to be playing on America's Cardroom.ag, the next big thing. You haven't heard about it yet? Have you not heard about America's Cardroom? Well, <laughs> you're going to find out about America's Cardroom by the end of this video. I promise you that. So, Today we're going to be playing an assortment of S and G's, and no, that does not stand for shits and giggles. These are some sit and goes. Uh, we got some double or nothing sit and goes on the right side here. We got a 150 and a three dollar on the left. We have some normal tournaments where we already lost one of our players in the three dollar six max, and also we got a ten dollar turbo six max at the top. I've also regged a bunch of other stuff, some uh, $10 sit and goes, $15 sit and goes, but I'm playing at a non-peak time. I think most of the Americanos are at work right now, so it's understandable that action's going to be a little bit slow. Anyway, while we're six-handed and we have some time to talk about it, let's talk about it. Why the heck am I playing on America's card room? Already half the people turn off the it's not stars. <laughs> I'm not watching it. I'm only watching if it's poker stars. If it's not poker stars, I don't want to see that. Okay. Well, first things first, uh, when it comes to online poker, I feel like the good old US of A always seems to get left out. And I want my American contingent of Team Gripst to feel included. Yes, guys, I care about you. Yes, I know you exist. Yes, it matters. And yes, it looks like we have some big action going on in the double or nothing. Table four... Uh, remember, we only have to make to the top three in these, so if aces can suck out, we'd be super close. And even though aces don't, we're one guy down and one man closer to making that money. Now, next question is going to be, well, why are you playing double or nothing sit and goes? Uh, you know, we want to see that cash game. Well, I've had a lot of people asking for double or nothing sit and goes, so, you know, people have been asking for them. i got to give the people what they want. Um, you people who want to see some uh, cash game videos, I'm going to give you what you want in the near future too. I will be giving you some cash game videos. What in the heck is going on here? Um, so I see that my player stats are out of place, but Esalizo is playing pretty loose and he's repping a pretty narrow range of hands. Like turned set of fives is pretty much it. And there's a bunch of draws that he can be doing this with too. Anyway, we'll call one and see if he follows through on the river and we got them aces so he has to have either turned the nuts or checked back a super seriously strong hand on the flop to have us beat I mean it's a three dollar sit and go and when playing these uh, small stakes tournaments I think people screw around a lot more than they probably should so I'm gonna look this guy up and see just exactly what he's got he ain't got nothing he had one of the largest parts of his range that we thought he could have, which is a turned draw, you know. I'm surprised he didn't bet the flop with that, but whatever. He didn't want to bet the flop with his draw. He turned a draw. He wants to uh, raise it up there in case we're stabbing with, you know, just some random hand that didn't connect because he checked back. And he's like, all right, well, I'll raise the turn. Maybe I can take it down here. And if my opponent doesn't fold to me on the turn, well, I have a bunch of outs I can make the best hand. Uh, he did not get one of those outs and he did not make the best hand but he still followed through so we got a nice little chip up there on table three um a seven suited sure why the heck not oh it's a double or nothing we don't really need to open as much in double or nothing sit and goes and i'll talk about that a little bit more as we go along uh, i got one more reason that uh we're playing on america's card room and that is because i wanted to let y'all know that there is a big event going on this weekend a very big event that you probably should be playing in and if you haven't heard about it yet um, well I'm about to let you know that goodness so this Sunday at uh, America's card room there is a million dollar guaranteed tournament and this is the first million dollar guaranteed tournament in America in like three years if I'm not mistaken maybe it's two maybe it's two and a half it's probably about two and a half. Anyway, it's been like a really long time. And finally, they got a million dollar guaranteed tournament. It's it's set up really well. It starts at 3 p.m., which is just in time for football. 
You can play the million dollar poker tournament while you're watching that football. Um, and the buy in is 540. 540. Grips and turn it off. Can't afford that. It's too much money for me. It's not right. Really I know. 540 is a lot of fucking money, man. I don't even feel like super comfortable about putting up that money, but I'm gonna. Because the value is too good. I'm not going to miss this thing. I can't possibly miss out on this tournament. So the good news is there are still plenty of saddies running uh, and still time to get in on the cheap. They do $100 saddy every night at 8.30 p.m. So let's see. we got Thursday, Friday, Saturday. There's still three more days. Uh, and they run satellites during the day to those nightly satellites. So you can get in on those. And also there's uh, Sunday. There will obviously be like a last chance one. Probably $100 buy with like... 50 seats guaranteed or something. So that will definitely be the softest of all the satellites. So if you think you might want to play, but you aren't sure if you should play or if you can afford it, well, if you can get 100 on there to play a last and you want to play a satellite, the last chance Saddy is the best one to play uh, for sure. Okay, so this guy checked back the flop, Nathan, on uh, table two here, which makes me think some kind of showdown value. And then betting the turn, we, we call with the king because it may be good. Uh, he may have a worse king, he may have a better king, he may have a queen. But uh, when he overbets the river, I'm just going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he either checked back a queen or did a big slow play, and I'm not going to pay him off in full there. Here, where we got three bets small with the queen 10 on table one, we checked back to pot control. And uh, now we're going to take our hand to showdown because that's what we does. Oh, nice. We have two full houses, not one, but two. So we're only going to be beat here if he three bet us with aces and then check them on the flop. And so far his stats are pretty freaking loose. 50% three bet. So I think we could see a bunch of junk in addition to aces. And that is the eight. So uh, if you want more information on the winning millions tournament, I've put a link in the video description that uh, has all the info on the satellites, all the info on the starting time, structure, everything. So if you want to play or if you want to even consider playing uh, that info is in the video description below here, right, you know, right, right there. Anyway, y'all know what's going on now, and I got sweet news about that, is that not only will I be playing the Winning Millions tournament, but I will also be streaming it on Sunday, and oh shit, we got another sit and go. So this will be our backup. We have a, a more normal tournament, a 15, 15 ducat nine max turbo that'll pay three spots so that'll be fun um, but yeah not only will i be playing the winning millions but i'm going to be streaming it at uh our twitch channel twitch.tv forward slash grips so if you want to come by on sunday you can watch me as i try to make it to the end of that tournament and win all the monies uh this would be a good board to see bet but i think i can also rep an ace by checking back and if they don't have an ace they're just going to check to me again and i can take it down on a turn um, if they don't, I can see the river for free, and I guarantee that I do not get check raised off my hand. So the price isn't fantastic, two to win five. If it was like two to win six, it'd be fine. But uh, he could also not have an ace and give up on the river. So I'm going to call A to try to make my draw and B to take a small stab on the river if he checks. Now, he could just be totally owning me. He could be checking to induce a bluff. But I am going to fire just one, and if he called out a small line with like nines or something, and he wants to just take a stab on the turn when it went check, check, then I think he is going to fold to this bet. So do I think he's going to fold an ace? No. Am I trying to get him to fold an ace? No. Do I think there are hands he can have that aren't an ace? Yes. And, well, he had, he had the jack. Had I bet bigger, would he have folded the jack? Maybe. But I feel, I feel fine about my flop check back, especially now that I see like just how wide and just how weak his range is, because he probably would have stabbed with that anyway. Now we got we to gotta all in on the turbo table. Just, hey, I got I got ace queen for two hours. I'm like, yes, I made a, ah, oh, shit, he made a flush. You know that's what that guy was thinking. That is, that is exactly verbatim how his reaction went down. And so far, I've already seen some pretty silly shit. <laughs> during this little session and I hope that you'll see um, you know what what types of players America's card room has to offer and also you can just get a feel for the software I personally quite like this software I know a lot of people are like yeah if I can hit it hit it make it card room etc it's I don't see what the big problem is I think it's totally cool um, but this way you know you can at least see the software 
and make a decision for yourself whether or not you think it looks like something you could play on. If you, if you think it's going to tilt the heck out of you, then, I mean, I guess you got to skip winning millions. Because, I mean, there's no point in playing something if you're just going to be on tilt. Uh, but, you know, there's also some customizable stuff. You can, you can change the background to it. Uh, we could probably do that in another video, though, because this video, we're trying to make it money. We're trying to get this grill, and we trying to get stacked. All right, so uh, the uh, Simpo Jack on table two, we're definitely not going to be playing. Also, in these double or nothings, like, I don't think you need to open as many pots uh, as you do in a normal sit and go. So let's talk about strategic adjustments when playing double or nothings versus, versus cash games versus other kind of tournaments. So in a cash game, your value of your chips is worth what it is. You win five bucks. In a hand, your stack is worth five more dollars. Not the same in sit and goes and tournaments because even if you get all the chips, you don't get all the money. You get a piece of the prize pool. Um, so the more top heavy a tournament is, the more it rewards finishing in first place, uh, the more things play like a cash game. And we call that a steep payout structure, like steep. And then the flatter the payout structure becomes, like in a double, double or nothing sit and go, which is the flattest payout structure you can get, the less incentive there is to get chips because, as I said, even if you get all the chips, you don't win all the money, but also you can make the same amount of money as the dude who won all the chips with way less than all the chips if you can just survive. So in these tournaments, there's a much higher premium placed on survival and just being in the tournament and just having chips. So you know you don't need to take on as much variance as you would in uh, a regular sit and go or cash game. So what I'm saying basically is in double or nothing sit and goes, you should be more risk averse than you would be in a cash game. And what the fuck happened here? If I just see bet, this would have been much easier to play. I was checking so I could like pot control. Now it's a bet and a raise. I mean, Scuzzlebutt's an idiot though. I'm still, I'm still gonna call. That's, that's pretty loose, but I'm still gonna call. And all right, we got we got another one, a little five dollar dawn. We got all kinds of action. This is going to be a good little let's play. So there on table four, we just did the cheap steal. And all right, Lamont, he's playing thirty one eight. Sorry, the stats don't line up, but I can see where they are. Or I guess I could like move them into place. Perfect in place. So he's he's got like a big gap between his uh, VPIP and pre flop raise. So that means he's kind of a loose passive. He likes to see flops, and he generally doesn't get out of line after. So for him to be willing to put his whole stack in, I'm going to think that he has a pair of aces with a nine kicker beat. All right, we're all in with the best hand on table four. I don't know why he's calling there. This is a double or nothing. You don't need to try to bust people. There were no antis. Uh, that was a, for a full 10 bigs. He was not getting a good price. That was a bad call. Oh, wait. I know why he called, because we're playing a $3 sit and go, where people make lots of mistakes. And that's why sit and goes are one of the best places you can build your bankroll. First, people just people just play bad anyway. Like they just they don't play good poker to begin with. But then when you get into the like strategic stuff of like, oh, like when do I need to like call with a lot of hands? When do I need to uh, you know say I'm just gonna play cautious poker, like pair of sixes? What, 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 I'm trying to gain the one fifty in the middle. That's not gonna help me. That's not gonna make a difference to my chances. I'm gonna increase my stack like less than ten percent. No, it's not gonna have a significant enough impact for it to be worth going after it. Uh, queen 10 off here. We're not going to play out of position. We're just not interested in that. And here with uh, a pretty dry board, jack 2-3, we're definitely going to uh, go with it. We're just going to see bet in our regular sit and go. Here, I'll in loop. Uh, stealing blind versus blind. Uh, I'm all in. If you got a monster hand, cool, but I'm not letting you see a flop. And if you want to call the all in with king jack, that's cool by me. Um, Ten ball, ace ball, just as good. Slightly less painful for him, but just as good. So there you go. You see another one guy 3xing, calling off uh, for like a lot of chips. I mean, he he had fine chips. He's in perfect position to just cash and double his money. But he's like, nope, I'm ready to. I see a young whippersnapper. I got a better hand than you. I'm gonna call. No, you don't. No, you don't. But I always got the nuts. Uh, that's what you didn't know is that uh, I got it, dude. I got it. So, yeah. Also, a good thing with uh, ACR here, you know, they have the pre-sized pre buttons. 
which is always helpful. We got another one, $5 double or nothing, sit and go. I am going to be so overwhelmed with action. This is going to be sweet. You guys are going to think I'm fucking crazy. What I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven tables. Fortunately, sit and goes don't require too much thought. And uh, every once in a while, you just like, you just like flop a set and it's like, all right, all I got to decide is how quickly I want to build this pot. And you don't need to think too much. Yeah, we get it stacking. Ribs.com's how you had to get it stacking. The flops, I be smashing. The pots, I be blasting. Ribs.com's how you had to get it stacking. When the main event.